Legends, welcome back to Here's Rodders Reviews and uh, in this episode I'm going to give you a little bit of a recommendation more than a review of the Fear Street trilogy that's out on Netflix right now. Now I don't want to spoil it for you in this episode because it's just it's so much better than I really expected it to be whenever I started watching it. Like Fear Street Part 1 1994 I went into it kind of half-hearted because it was just, I heard some recommendations on it but you're getting into this sort of movie and you're thinking this is just going to be another one of these teen slasher movies and for the most part you do kind of get that in this one. Uh, basically there's, there's a, uh, I'm trying to think how far into this I can go without actually destroying it for you. Like, what you get in the trailers is, uh, there is a curse on a town by a witch that you know that gives you that you know you're expecting this going into it basically there's two uh, neighboring towns shady side which is the complete polar opposite to the the town next to it called uh what's the name of the other town i'm just looking it up here sunny vale so these two towns next to each other one is you know top notch everything's going good for people like the life is good in this one town and in the other town everything's kind of mediocre and people are just about getting by and there's just a, a complete opposite between the two and this is the beginning of the movie uh the first one you're seeing the competition between the teenagers of the two towns and it's it seems like it's going to be very much like your formulaic kind of slasher movie and whatnot. And the first part of the movie is very much the competition between the teenagers and these two towns. And in all fairness, I could have skipped out of the first movie, 1984, at any point. But in saying that, it was good to see that time again on screen, just back in the day. Uh, 1994 for me basically I was still in high school back then so it kind of although it was set in American towns and an American background it's just you know the same kind of feeling that I can actually remember having back in 94 when you were at school and all that sort of stuff but uh, basically throughout the film uh, there's killings and Shady Side and Shady Side is uh, throughout history this keeps happening. Somebody goes crazy, murders a bunch of people, and then gets killed themselves either by their own hand or by the police. And you see that the opening of the movie gives you that in this film. And uh, we eventually get to a point where the the witch comes into it, or the idea of the witch comes into it. And uh, a teenager sees the witch and away finds their bone, finds their bones buried in the side of the, the road in a forest and that begins a connection between these teenagers and the witch and it becomes a, a fight for their lives basically against this witch who is sending the, the killers of past massacres in the town resurrecting them, sending them after these teenagers. That's that's a new way of telling a story through very you know, a lot of the stuff in there you think is gonna be very cliched because it's that's a lot of stuff that you know from older movies, you know, and uh, again, you're kinda of just thinking to yourself, that's gonna be the new scream sort of a deal. And you can be forgiven for that, but as you go around throughout these movies, and it's why I want to recommend them so much. Now, there's a good bait and switch in all three films. Not so much the first one, but the second two, very much so. The, the killings I heard were very, very graphic in the, the films. And, you know, for the most part in the movies, they do the whole. And it's almost scarier when you don't see something, but you're led to believe it. It's like the old Hitchcock style movies. Uh, some of those were, you know, as far as gore goes, very, very little on screen. But it was the build-up, the way that it was executed, 
that made it scary. You didn't need to see something for it to be, you know, intense. But I knew from a couple of reports this was the case for these movies. So, uh, there's a section in the first one and the second one in particular that was just like when it happened, I was like, oh my goodness. And I actually had to rewind it back and play it again because it was just so well done. The visual effects are top notch. And all three movies, and there's a couple of those death sequences that you're just like, oh, that actually looks real. You know, obviously it's not. That's a movie. But uh, this was just, in particular, the second one, something happens, and I'm just like, that is beyond, beyond brutal. But uh, anyway, I couldn't recommend them higher. I actually, I need to go back and actually watch the first one again fully invested on in it because as I say could have jumped out at any point but when we get to the end of that film and we get the connection to the second film which is and um, obviously these are set in three different time frames the first movie where everything starts off at 1994 at the end of the movie we get a connection to a massacre that happened in 1978 so the second film is set in that uh, through the story of a survivor of the 78 massacre who's still alive in 94 so the survivors from the first film get hold of her try to find her how she survived the attack by this witch and then the third one which is by far f- the best of the three i think uh low 78 is a strong contender but uh fear street part three 1666 is when the whole thing started for Shady Side, and we get to see the origin of the witch that's causing all the problems in 1994. And again, as I said, there's some good bit and switch material in here. And, and in all honesty, you know, I'm the sort of person, lifelong movie fan, and you tend to get ahead of the storylines sometimes well i find i do most of the times and for a trilogy of the films where the first one was very very much you know gosh i know where this is going there's no real big surprises happening here um when you get into part two and part three of fear street i was sitting there watching it been fairly arrogant about it going (laughs) here we go again of course this is what they're going to do this is you know i've got it i'm well ahead of the film makers here i know exactly what they're going to do and by the end of the the second one you're like well done i didn't see that coming <laughs> and then the the third movie that you think okay i'm trying my hardest not to spoil this for you the third one where you're going to see the origin of the witch and it's geniusly done because one of the the main girl from the, the first two movies that's you know she survives the attack in the first one what happens in the second one it's all told in flashback but by the end of the second one we're back into the 94 time frame something happens and then when you actually get part three uh 1966 or 1666 sorry it's told in flashback again but the character it's not she is in the the role of what actually happens the witch Sarah Fear and uh, it's, like, it's almost as if she's transported back into history and she's actually living the witch's life and the origin story so it's it's geniusly told and by the, the end of the third movie I was just like this is actually insanely insanely good I couldn't recommend it higher I, as I say been a lifelong movie fan usually caught up or ahead of the storylines i was very very impressed with the way that they were able to just drag you down that path and let you feel that you knew exactly what was going on but then they give you that little bit and switch and free you on to another path you weren't really expecting but just so well done so well executed and by the third film you're thinking to yourself this is fantastic I hope there's going to be more of these, and uh, goodness knows where they're going to go. I know this is based upon uh, a series of books, 
and uh, there is an open-ended ending to the third movie and you know this could quite easily be a standalone trilogy where it's at and uh, it's all fine and well if that happens but if they do decide to go ahead and spawn something from the series movies I'd quite gladly sit down and watch it now I'm not the biggest horror fan on the face of the planet but I do have a horror podcast so I might actually go into the movies in a little bit more detail over there so if you haven't checked out the horror podcast it's called Hellmouth Hotline I'll stick up the the cover of the podcast on the screen right here and you can go and check it out for yourself but we might do it there more detail these three movies really did enjoy them couldn't recommend them higher so if you haven't checked out Fear Street yet on Netflix jump over check it out and uh, I don't think it's going to be a waste of your time at all 